For the past year, we've been doing a lot of 2.4 gigahertz stuff, and unfortunately, I think this is going to be the last segment in the 2.4 gigahertz series. Now, in this segment, I want to explain wireless scanning tips and techniques. In front of me, I have a smorgasbord of equipment that we've been putting together over the year. Uh, we've got the waveguide, we've got some biquads, we've got video scanner, we have Wi-Fi cards, we have modded everything, modded Bluetooth, practically anything that's 2.4 gigahertz. Mine is Zigbee. It's pretty much the only thing I haven't showcased because it's really not that popular and no one's really asked for it. But uh, in this segment, you know, we've also got the helical, we've got the, uh, the compact collinear. I mean, everything that I've built on the show over the past year is right in front of me, plus a few things that I really haven't shown on the show. Now, I understand that the frame is pulled back really far. You can't get a good look at a lot of the equipment here, so you can always backtrack to previous segments, but some of the equipment that I have here has not been on the show. You can always go to my Picasa page, so uh, a lot of you on IRC and on the forums have actually asked for high quality pictures for reference on a lot of the stuff that I've built in front of me. And you know what? A picture says a thousand words. So uh, go to my Picasa page if you have any interest in any of this kind of stuff and you'll get actually really nice quality, high detailed, six megapixel, you know, close up images of all of this. So um, there are three classifications of any kind of equipment, technically speaking. Now derived from the ham radio terminology, you have either a handheld or portable, you have a mobile, and you have a base. So something handheld or portable would be something like maybe a, P a PDA or your Nintendo DS, uh, your PSP, something that can do some kind of wireless scanning. I've also got my handheld wireless scanner. This is actually made by um, Swan Technology. Um, this not, I did modify it with an antenna jack. There's not many pictures of it online, but it was a very simple modification. Uh, this really doesn't need too much documentation, but if you want some, ask and you shall receive. So those would be considered handheld devices, something that you can put in your hand, operate it with one hand, put it in your pocket, it'll sustain itself under battery life for an extended amount of time without needing an excessive recharge. So next up from there you have a mobile. A mobile is a device that you really can't operate it from a very small battery. It needs a, a beefier battery. Like a laptop would be more like a mobile. Now I've also got some, some routers here. Now if you're not familiar with the, the Linksys WRT54 series routers, they are actually routers that can run Linux. And this router can actually act as a wireless repeater or even a wireless network card. Or within itself, coupled with a serial terminal, such as the Zipit Z1 Instant Messenger or even a TI-83 calculator, or if you have an actual handheld serial terminal, uh, the two of these together can actually be a Wi-Fi scanner, a network scanner, intrusion detection software. You can modify these to put SD cards in them so they have increased storage. They have a 250 milliwatt output range. They have removable antennas for high gain, uh, so you can put high gain antennas on it. You really can't put this in your pocket, but you can put a battery pack on, on the WRT router and put it in a bag, walk around with it, and no one will even know that you're actually scanning for Wi-Fi or doing network penetration tests network penetration tests. Uh, smaller yet are the Fonar 2100 and the 2200 routers. Uh, they were given away for very cheap, if not free, for, at some point, but they, you really have to get into them and hack them. Uh, Fon has really been locking them down and it has been a bitch, but you can run, they do natively run uh, DDWRT or OpenWRT, which is an open source, relatively open source, Linux distribution, and these run the Atheros chipset meaning you can do packet injection in promiscuous mode. And at this point in time, you can actually use the phone routers to actually crack web encryption, but I'm not going to get into that. It's not the scope of today's, of today's segment. Um, so you, know, you can also use your laptop. That's more of a mobile device, as long as you have battery life and a decent antenna. Now, you can actually go about and put together a wireless video scanner, which is more of a portable than a handheld which is my rifle. I don't have it put together right now, but for the most part, this is it. Um, I think I've showcased it on the show before. It's a cutout of piece of wood with a scanner. I usually put the battery pack here, lots of Velcro to attach different devices and screens. You can go on my Picasso page and get really good images of this. Now, the reason this, I would consider this a portable device is because it's not really something you could put in your pocket like the handheld scanner I have in front of me. The first thing I really want to get into is 2.4 gigahertz video scanning tips and techniques because I find it it's the most fun. Now the thing about 2.4 gigahertz is it also requires the most bandwidth. Now bandwidth for radio is similar to bandwidth with your computer. Now Wi-Fi takes up a moderate amount of bandwidth, I think 5 kilohertz 
per channel. Uh, I do believe Bluetooth takes up about the same, if not less. Wireless audio and video can take up to 5 or 6 megahertz, so it needs a wider frequency to transmit. So if you go back a couple of episodes and look at the, um, at the segment Ophidian did on the Wi-Spy wireless, 2.4 gigahertz wireless spectrum analyzer, he actually shows you what happens when you have a 2.4 gigahertz camera operating in the 2.4 gig band while you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It actually eats up a very big part of the spectrum. So I've got the laptop here and I've got my handheld scanner and I've got this really cool tripod base. It's actually for a, an X10 security camera and with the remote control I actually can remote control and precisely position a biquad or whatever antenna. I prefer the biquads. They have a relatively uh, decent amount of gain for their size. They're easy to make. They have a very wide amount of bandwidth and um, they're really easy to mount this stuff. I, Go watch the biquad segment. I, um, biquads have to be my favorite so far. So with this little setup, I can actually waterproof my biquad and put this little guy outside, and I can actually uh, program in four different positions. So if you run your coax to your to your Wi-Fi card, I've actually got my Wi-Fi card right here. You waterproof everything, and you can put this outside. And the tripod base is waterproof. You can go ahead and put it outside, and if you actually don't feel like getting off your couch, if you have a computer per se and not a laptop. You can run the coax into your house and then pre-program in four different positions of really good signal strength. So, you know, every once in a while, if you want to go and get a couple of extra megs of download for your torrents, all you got to do is push a single button. It'll tune into the access point, and you're good to go. But pretend I didn't say that. But anyway, let's get to the wireless video scanning tips and techniques, shall we? Yes, we shall. Whether you like it or not, we're going to. All right, so in front of us, we have a screen capture of what I'm seeing on screen right now. When you've got the rubber duck antenna. Now, this has been modified. Uh, I really don't have any pictures of it, but if you need them, I can provide them. This is actually a Swan 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless video receiver. Uh, pretty much it's a baby monitor. That's usually what they sell them as. Uh, they're relatively expensive, uh, ranging into $250, but they're actually very nice to have. They're handheld and they're portable. And as I move the antenna around, you'll notice that we have something on channel 1. But seeing how we only have a rubber duck antenna, we, have, uh, we don't get a very good signal. If you notice on the screen, you can kind of see that there's some structure to the video. It's not straight and pure static. Now, if we go to another channel, the static will change slightly. Now, I do have a camera on channel 3, which is a picture of a plush rabbit in my bedroom. And if you notice, we got a lot of these really awkward horizontal bars on the screen that are acting as interference. That's actually Wi-Fi. That is the telltale sign that this is picking up Wi-Fi. And if I haven't stated already, uh, video will take up a larger amount of bandwidth. If you go back to Ophidian segment, where he demonstrated the Y-Spy, he actually shows you on a graph, an actual spectrum equalizer, of how much bandwidth a video actually takes up. So when selecting the proper antenna, I prefer biquads. The reason I like biquads is they're easy to make, they're relatively inexpensive, they're durable, you can waterproof them. They're just really my favorite antenna so far. However, um, as you go through the channels, if you notice how this channel, channel 4, oops, channel 4 will actually have um, diagonal hum bars, as I call them. So this is just a real clusterfuck of Wi-Fi as well as video. So I'm actually going to go and swap out to the biquad antenna real quick. And uh, normally, all you get without the antenna, this, this would be normal static. This is what you'd normally see. As you start to get close to, the, um, to an actual transmitter, you'll actually notice some structure starting to actually tune in to the screen. And it really depends on the refresh rate of your screen. Now, the capture card has a very hard time picking up static. So if I go through this, you'll notice that the hum bars on the screen, it looks like you're almost trying to pick up a TV channel, but you're not quite. And if you look at this one, where I have the, the biquad positioned, you'll just faintly notice that there are actually uh, two tail lights and a license plate. This is an a the channel one on this is actually uh, to a, uh, someone's, uh, one of my local neighbor's driveway. This is where he parks his car. So if we actually go off center access, you'll notice that it'll start to fade away. 
and then if we go back, it'll fade in. And this is one of the tips that you really should try to use with wireless video scanning, that every time that a, a signal will reflect off of a metal surface, its phase will actually rotate 90 degrees. So usually that's why I take a helical antenna when video scanning. In fact, let's hook up the helical and see what kind of, what kind of signal we get from the helical indoors. So when doing video scanning, the biquad is nice and small, but typically the helicals will actually yield a better gain, but it really determines on what kind of environment that you're in. If you're in a cityscape like I am, you're probably better off using a helical as it's circular polarized. However, the biquad does have a um, wider bandwidth, meaning it can receive a larger range of bandwidth, of actual frequency, at once. So, let's see if we can try to tune this in real quick. I really don't think we're going to hit it with this antenna indoors. So, unfortunately, this antenna doesn't have as much bandwidth. If you notice that we're getting a much crisper, clearer signal from my bedroom, and the Wi-Fi is barely negligible. I mean, we can get a, a much wider sweep at the helical, but there's something on channel 4 around here, but I'm not getting a good signal in, indoors. And unfortunately, this is why I actually wanted to go out and do this, so I can actually show you in-field segments and, uh, and tips and techniques. So when doing video scanning, you have to understand that uh, your signal will reflect and bounce off of metal surfaces, so you have to have an antenna that will pick up reflected signals easier. So I would go with the biquad or helical. The compact collinear really doesn't have enough bandwidth or enough gain to really pick up anything. Um, it works, but it, it's a bit better than a rubber duck. Um, you could actually use one of the windsurfers, which I have here, but it's it's taken apart. You can use the, the windsurfer parabolic reflector and put that around the rubber duck, but I, I find that these things are too flimsy. You're better off building a biquad itself. Now, when you're actually doing wireless video scanning t uh, technique, uh, wear headphones and try to key in your audio. And what you'll notice is the audio carrier will actually fade from static to actual structured you know, audio. You'll actually hear it coming in sooner than you'll see it. But the thing with that is you can either have a 6.5 megahertz carrier or a 6 megahertz carrier. This is a 6.5 megahertz carrier. The one that I have in the bedroom, the camera that's transmitting, is 6 megahertz. So unfortunately, you do not pick up audio on this thing if it's off the, off the center carrier. Now, these are just a few of the tips and techniques for video scanning. It's really an art form to it. Uh, you can even use your body as a reflector when you're using a rubber duck, so the radio signals will actually reflect off of your body. Or you can actually keep it close to your body and act as an attenuator. Your body will absorb the radio waves, so unless you're right on top of the transmitter, you're not going to get a signal. So, uh, well, that's it for wireless video. Um, i got to go and turn off the camera because it's going to interfere with the rest of the project. So let me cut frame and reset up, and next we'll get into Bluetooth. All right, so Metatron, a couple of episodes, showed us some Linux tools and utilities for scanning for Bluetooth, including BT Scanner. Unfortunately, I don't have the setup to do screen captures from Linux at the moment, but I did want to show you something pretty cool. Now, I'll actually narrate now, but I'll put the camera up to the phone and I'll show you. If you have a Motorola phone, in fact, my girlfriend has an LG LX or LG uh, 10,000 Voyager, and it actually has something similar to a program called BT Scanner, which, like I said, Metatron has showed us. And it'll actually scan for Bluetooth devices and actually show their device names and their features. Bluetooth scanning in itself is actually a very technical thing, and it's very difficult to do. You have to have a, a very good understanding of Bluetooth in itself. Devices can actually be in a client mode or master mode or slave mode. You have uh, SCO links, and there's a lot of abbreviations, and there's profiles, and there's protocol. But if you just want to do some scanning, uh, go to your phone and open it up. Go to the phone book and go to any contact whatsoever and go to send and when you hit select for the send it's going to ask you to turn your bluetooth on if it's not already on and i would recommend turning your bluetooth off at all times until you want to use it and go to look for devices and your phone will actually scan through the bluetooth frequencies i believe that there's 79 of them uh, and it'll actually look for devices now i'm actually going to go back to the computer real quick and do some screen caps off the off the